Shalom, y'all. Welcome to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afia Levi. We're starting another live discussion right now going into the uh, censorship on social media. Today's discussion is censorship on social media. So I recently had a TikTok live going over a class discussing uh, a few things with people and the powers that be decided to end my life. And unfortunately, it's it's sad when you are going over information that can be insightful for you. Uh, shalom to you. Hope you're doing well, LJ. Uh, uh, shalom to you, Gentle B. Shalom to you, uh, Sister Zipporah. It, it's, it's really sad when you have a scenario where your voice is silenced. Critical information that can be beneficial to the public gets turned off. You see, when it came to the propaganda me uh, meals that we would receive from ABC News, CNN, Fox News, you couldn't turn it off. Only thing you could do was shut off the TV and not listen. But hour after hour, day after day, they would give you news media from their perspective they would give you information from their perspective, propaganda from their perspective. But yet and still, they'll prevent you from learning insightful information that can be beneficial towards all. So I recently had a class and the class had what? Anywhere from 120 to 200 people in the room. And little by little, the censorship algorithm blocked it and then said, misinformation they said misinformation and then i said hold on wait a minute what mis what misinformation all i was doing was reading the bible so i had to make an appeal i had to make an appeal to appeal what they did and then after they approved the appeal they allowed me to come back online but notice, usually when I have a TikTok live and I start it, as soon as I start the live, at least two to 300 people are joining up. But now it's just saying 25 people. That's called being shadow banned, folks. That's what that's called. I'm, I'm literally less than 100 people away from reaching 10,000 followers on this platform. Okay. But yet, when I host a class, 30 people are in the room. How does that make sense? Censorship in social media. Let's talk about it. During the time of September 11th, 2001, all the way to now, many various things that have been going on that have been suspicious, the powers that be, would resort to calling them conspiracy theory. A theory is when someone makes a statement and postulates a statement, but the statement is not true. A theory is something that cannot be proven. Once someone provides you with evidence, the theory now changes to fact. It's no longer a hypothesis. It's no longer a guess. It's no longer an assumption. It turns from the realm of opinion to fact. So now, let's make a comparison. If I'm reading various texts of predictions that are made hundreds of thousands of years before we were born, and I give you the correlation to say this prediction right here was made around 700 BC. And then I give you a current event article or a news story to say, hey, look, what we're reading out of this particular section of this prediction matches up with what we're seeing. For example, if I read a prediction that there's going to come a time where in various cities, states, and regions, the waters will turn blood red. 
And then I show you video footage from BBC News, from Algeria, Al Jazeera News, from CNN News, from quote unquote reputable sources and news media saying, look, this phenomenon that they call red tide is occurring and it has never occurred before in the history of mankind. Shalom, most high in Christ, bless. Bonjour, bonsoir, sir. Sister Lola is from the tribe of Levi, so she speaks a little bit of Haitian Creole. All praise to the most high. So, ça passe, ma boule, hey. So, if you read a prediction that was written down hundreds of years, thousands of years before it took place, and then you read or you witness video evidence, let's say you go to court, right? And you go before a lawyer and a judge and they say, show me the evidence and you have video footage. That means now it's changing now from the realm of opinion, the realm of theory to now fact. You understand? So what we try to do here on the Forefront Radio is present information through a biblical based worldview that is not based on just opinion solely, but we also read news stories, articles, we utilize dictionaries, encyclopedias, we use older books that are from the 1300s, 1400s, 1500s. We provide evidence to prove what we say. How then now can the social media advocates say that we're prompting people to follow misinformation? It makes no sense. All we're doing is giving you the correlation between biblical-based predictions, history, scientific data that you can always go back and reference. That's why whenever we read, we give you the book, we give you the chapter, we give you the verse. Whenever we read an article, we give you the, the, the name of the article as well as the website of the article. So we live in a society now where when you provide factual data and information, social media giants decide to say, no, you can't say that on Facebook. No, you can't say that on Instagram. No, you can't say that on TikTok. Because they will associate it with anti-government or anti-American or anti-anti-propaganda. But yet the evil will be promoted to the front of the magazines and TV screens the misdirection of information that places human beings in the West in a bubble. It wasn't, it wasn't, if it wasn't for TikTok, you wouldn't know what's going on in Palestine. If it wasn't for TikTok, you wouldn't know about the Israelites being melanated people because they heavily censor YouTube. They heavily censor Facebook. They heavily censor Instagram. Only Twitter and TikTok are the two places where the censorship is kind of held down. But 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 now TikTok is taking it to extreme, especially towards non-Eurocentric types. Whenever information is presented and the information is factual and it's unbiased towards sharing facts, then they say, no, that's misinformation. Reading the Bible and reading news articles is considered misinformation. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. So my thoughts and efforts and my, my prayers will go for those brothers and sisters that are learning that you understand what the agenda is. They will do everything in their power to prevent you from knowing who you are. You've gone to church, many of you, 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Many of you have been exposed to religion, even if you haven't visited church. And they've always told you that Christ was a European. But now that you're learning truthful information that you are God's chosen people, they say 
misinformation. You found you found out on on these platforms and and other platforms, brothers and sisters that are willing to take time out of their busy schedule to go over history, to go over information, to go over prophecy. And they will censor it. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example right now. Watch this. I'm going to give you an example right now. This book right here, this book right here is called The Bible as History in Pictures. Put a one in the chat if you could see it. Put a one in the chat if you could see it. All right. This is called The Bible as History in Pictures. So now, what is the key word you want to focus on? History, history, meaning that this is not an opinion. This is not someone's feelings. This is not a hypothesis. This is history. Okay. I want to thank uh, the brothers and sisters that assisted me in acquiring this book. Because guess what? This book is out of print. So it's talking about the history of Bible times, right? That region of Northeast Africa where our ancestors used to live. The history related to the Bible where they were scattered into Assyria and Babylon and all those regions in Western Asia. So now, let's see the copyright of this book. Okay? All right. It says... The Bible as History in Pictures with 329 illustrations and eight color plates. Okay, so they have 329 illustrations and eight color plates. This book, copyright 1963, 1964. So now this book is out of print, y'all. Okay. Chapter one, the land of Shinar. Chapter two, the coming of the patriarchs. Chapter three, Joseph in Egypt. Let's go to Joseph in Egypt. Let's start at page 58. Now, Joseph was a biblical based character, right? Joseph in Egypt. All right. Joseph was one of the sons of Jacob. Look at the thick lips. Look at the big nose. Right? Ancient Egyptian. This is archaeology. This is history. Meaning this is not a painting. This is a stone thing that you could see. Okay? Hmm. Interesting. Watch this. It says, in the land of Pharaoh, Genesis chapter 39 through chapter 50. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him and delivered him out of all his affliction and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Acts chapter 7, verse 9 to 10. So we have the reference. Okay. So now let's look at this. Israelites in Egypt. Hmm. Hmm. Do these look like Polish people that call themselves you wish? Do these look like Polish people? Hmm. Do these look like Ukrainian people, Kazarian people that call themselves you wish? Hmm. Do these pictures depict maybe maybe my lighting is not too well for those that are that are here. Let me let me put my flashlight on on my other phone. 
does these images look like the people that are Danish that converted to a religion? Okay. This book is called the Bible in history, meaning archeology span in pictures. These are taken off of hieroglyphs y'all. This is taken. You got light skinned Negroes. You got dark skinned Negroes. You got, you got Negroes and you got the dark chocolate brothers. You got the Puerto Rican looking Negro. And you got the Haitian looking Negro, the African American looking Negro, right? That's what we see here. Do me a favor, y'all. Tap the screen. Get the likes up. Let's get it to at least 10K. All right. So this type of information is not taught in school. Did they tell you during Black History Month that the ancient Israelites living amongst the Egyptians look like this? Joseph in Egypt look like this? Did they show you that? No. Not at all. When you went to church and visited on Easter Sunday... For that one time that you went, did they show you archaeological data of the Israelites being melanated people? They got light-skinned Negroes. They got dark-skinned Negroes. Hmm. No, they did not. Where did you get this book, Ak? I want one too. Our beloved sister has sent it to me in the mail. I'm not going to give her name for security reasons. I don't want nobody harassing my sister. But she saw that I was teaching black history according to the Bible, and she wanted to uh, make efforts to put in bricks for this truth. So she contacted another sister and had them send it to me. What's the name of the book? I missed it again. Moderators, could you write it in the chat, please? The name of the book is called The Bible in History with Pictures. The Bible as History with Pictures. Okay. All right, let's show you another one. We're talking about Joseph in Egypt, yeah? We're talking about Joseph in Egypt. All right. Let me see if I can get the lighting a little bit better. All right, here you go. And the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh's, and captain of the guard. Genesis 37, verse 36. Like the Pharaoh and rulers of Assyria and Babylon, the kings of Israel from Saul onwards had their bodyguards of gentle arms. Thank you. That's the book right there. Okay. They furnished the heralds who proclaimed the approach of the monarch and clearing the way for his chariots as well as pro, pro, uh, providing the palace guards. This is an Egyptian soldier of the bodyguard from a relief on the temple tomb of Ramses II. This is the time during the Israelites when we were in captivity. So an Israelite could be in his army. Due to censorship, they will try to prevent you from seeing this information. Due to censorship, they will try to prevent you from seeing this information. Let's go to another page. Look at this. The brother got an afro hair with waves. What's coming on here? Remember, Joseph was in Egypt, right? Bible as history in pictures. Look at the sister right here getting ready to braid this man's hair. That's what it looked like to me in the picture. I don't know what it looked like to you. Book name, and it's literally pinned on the top. Are y'all paying attention? Roots, you're asking for the book name, and it's <laughs> pinned right at the top. Pay attention. The Bible as history in pictures. Why, why would you unpin it? Why would you unpin? Why would you unpin it, Yabe? That was the title of the book. <laughs> my, mods ain't, my mods ain't modern right What's going on here <laughs> You alright brother You alright I know, I know you're not really too keen on technology So it's okay Alright so These are our illustrations Of the Israelites working in Egypt 
So now one might look at the picture and think, okay, it's black and white. Maybe these are are uh, European folks, right? Right? Yeah, the pin has a timer. Correct. Okay. Uh, Yaabe, le le don't unpin the comment, Yaabe. Leave leave it alone, brother. I want that. I want the book title to be up on the page. All right. So just leave it there. All right. So sister LJ just pinned it there. Just leave it there. Don't don't mess with it. All right. All right. Look. Archaeological data, engravings of the Israelites, Joseph in Egypt. Yeah. All right. Let's look at some more. Let's look at some more. I see that. So these are illustrations of what they saw on the walls in Egypt. So now notice this thing is scraped off. All right. But you can see that the, this is a man riding a horse. When you look at the original in color, it's a black man riding a horse. All of these are black men. Okay. All of these are black men. Now this Can y'all hear me now? Can y'all hear me now? Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. All right. So now y'all can see with evidence now, because when we talk about black people being the ancient Hebrews, when we talk about Hispanics, native indigenous, being the real ancient Hebrews of the Bible, they always say, show us the proof. What proof do you have? This is taken off the walls of Egypt. If this is, isn't related to the Bible, why would the Bible be called? Why would this book be called the Bible as history in pictures? This doesn't look like a Danish person who converted to a religion called Judaism. This doesn't look like a Polish person. This doesn't look like an Eastern European, does it? as slaves in Egypt, huh? Joseph being second in command to Pharaoh in Africa with hieroglyphs in the back and people that are serving under Joseph. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. Hold on a minute. You can see the comparison between the dark skin tone Versus the light color of the clothing. This is the history that they tried to hide from us, y'all. This is the history that they tried to hide from you. How come during Black History Month, they never showed you that your ancestors were in Egypt, North Africa, Northeast Africa? How come? The Bible as history in pictures. Y'all see that? We're on page 68 and 69. Joseph in Egypt. The censorship on social media is so real that all you got to do is read books and archaeology and they will try to keep you from seeing this information. Let's read the caption. It says, Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering for it was without number, right? Does this look like people gathering corn? It sure does. Thank you for educational purposes only. Does this look like people gathering corn? It sure does. Shalom, hope you're doing well. Censorship on social media. When we read it out of the Bible, they will say misinformation. So now what are you going to do with this now? This is archaeological historical data proving if Joseph, the son of Jacob, is an Israelite and he looks like this and the children of Israel 
were his brothers like Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Simeon, Naphtali, Ephraim, Manasseh. How can you ever say that what we're presenting is misinformation, social media giants, when all we're doing is reading books, magazines, dictionaries, encyclopedias, historical archaeological data. Let's continue the caption. It says, corn is being cut in the field by hand under the supervision of the land owner and the overseers of the slaves, the overseer of the slaves, the overseer of the slave. Who was the overseer? Joseph. You had Egyptians, Canaanites, Nubians, Ethiopians working as servants, employees. But the slavery that they experienced ain't the same slavery like chattel slavery in America. Meaning they were indentured servants. They were, they were working for survival, not working for free. So corn is being cut. Is that what we see here? You see the men with the men and women with the sickle cutting, right? You see the men and women with the sickles, right? Cutting, right? You see the corn being gathered and put in heaps. You see that? Y'all see that? It says, corn is being cut in the field by hand under the, the supervision of the landowner. So the landowner was Pharaoh. And the overseer, that was Joseph, the son of Israel. And he was superseding over the people that were working. The harvesters, one of them is a child, grasp the stalks in their left hands and apply the sickle with the right. After it has been threshed, the quantity of grain is recorded by scribes, while an overseer sitting on a heap of corn urges on the slaves to work faster as they pile up the grain above. See that? So this would be Joseph right here. Right here, this will be Joseph right here. This will be the taskmaster right there on the top in the middle right here. I apologize if the image quality is going in and out. All right. Y'all see that? So this is Joseph right here. These are people that are working under Joseph, including men, women, and children. Okay. Somebody says, what book is this? Can somebody post the uh, post the title of the book again, please, and pin it? So when we tell you that Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the 12 tribes of Israel, we're not talking out of our rectum. We're literally showing you archaeological data and proving it with the Bible. But they'll tell you color doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what color. It well, our ancestor Joseph is a Black man. This is like telling somebody, George Washington, it doesn't matter that George Washington is a European person. George Washington came from Korea because color doesn't matter, right? Color doesn't matter. Then George Washington is Chinese. Donald Trump is Vietnamese. Okay. Joe Biden is from Azerbaijan. Because according to these idiots that make rebuttals, they say color doesn't matter. He was... He was olive. He was Middle Eastern. Well, here go Middle Eastern right here. Th this right here is Middle Eastern right here. Black people. Here go your olive right here. Green, brown, or black. That's the only three colors color that uh, uh, olives come in. Olives are green. This ain't green. Olives are brown and olives are black. So if you say they're olive complexion, there you go. This is olive right here. Joseph in Egypt. Caption reads, and Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea. Does this look like people gathering corn as the sands of the sea? Look at it. That's Joseph right here. That's the chariots right here. Getting all the people to come, men, women, and children, to cut down the corn stalks, 
like they still do to this day in Africa and gather the corn, set it up on heaps, let it dry out and gather it all together. That's what we're seeing here. Joseph is an Israelite. He fathered two sons, one named Ephraim, one named Manasseh. He had interrelations with a black Egyptian woman and two tribes out of the Israelites. One is called Ephraim, one is called Manasseh. Joseph fathered these two half Egyptian men. This is an image of Joseph. Okay, this is a depiction of Joseph in an archaeological book. Does the book say where they found the drawings? We're, we're reading out of the book, and here's, here, here's an example right here. You see, it says, Tomb, Tomb at Thebes. Tomb at Thebes. Meaning what? These are engraved on the tombs. Archaeological data engraved on the tombs depicting Joseph. Here are the Egyptian hieroglyphs above it. And then those that were working under Joseph. His sons were Ephraim and Manasseh, two out of the 12 tribes of Israel. So question for the critical thinker. If Joseph looks like this. Who the hell are those guys in the Middle East? If Joseph looks like this, there's an entire war going on with Palestine where European people are fighting with Arabs and they both don't belong there. The Arabs invaded that region and were given a mandate by the British during World War I that if they conquered that land and defeated the Ottoman Turks, that they would give that land to the Arabs. Then in World War II, they reneged on that deal and instead, after World War II, gave it to the descendants of Ukrainians, gave it to the descendants of the Polish, gave it to the descendants of Eastern Europeans, and some of the Western Europeans and said, okay, you're in a religion called Judaism. You can have this land, but wait a minute. They're fighting over a property where, th where this history book, where they pulled images off of a tomb in Africa, and the book is called The Bible as History in Pictures, and Joseph, and Joseph is a black man. You can't make this stuff up. We have been lied to. You should be upset with Joe Biden, Donald Trump, and many other political candidates for sending money to the Middle East for a war when the original people of Joseph look like this and they won't even give them reparations as the descendants of captivity. You can't make this stuff up, y'all. If Joseph looked like this, who the hell is over there fighting in the Middle East? Why are Arabs and why so-called Pal Palestinians, right? And why are Eastern Europeans that converted to a religion fighting a war when on the tombs in Africa? It's showing you that Joseph looks like this. Hmm. Israelites. Israelites. Joseph under Pharaoh. Big nose, big wide lips. And then if you're confused on whether this is a black man, you got the picture. Right here. If you're ever confused, look at the picture. Does this look like a black man? Yes or no? Does this look like a melanated person? Does this look like an Eastern European, a Ukrainian, 
Does this look like a Ukraine? Do, do these look like Ukrainian people? Hmm. If you're ever confused. Hmm. Interesting. But there's an entire war with billions of dollars. Okay. Do these look like Eastern Europeans? Huh? Black men working as slaves in Egypt. <laughs> Somebody say you look like Beyonce. Okay. We're Afros. Okay. You see? Censorship in social media. Now, they will take this book and make you pay well over three, four hundred dollars for this book. When it was less than that, all because we're bringing this information out on the Internet. Look at this. Bunch of Negroes with Afros in Egypt. Ancient Israelites. Ancient Israelites in Egypt. Okay. You see that? So this information that we're presented to you folks gets censored because when we read the Bible and give you archaeological data, then they say, no, you're making it up. I didn't write this book. Look at the look at the wavy hair that looks like what? Look at the braided hair that looks like what? Does that look like European hair right there? Brothers walking around with braids and locks, what are they call dreadlocks. Does that look like European people? I don't know. Big nose, fat lips. Right? But they make you hate yourself when you're the people of the Bible. When you're the people of the Bible. When you're the people of the Bible. They make you hate your lips and hate your face and hate your de description. When this was written, listen, y'all, this was written in, the copyright for this was 1964. So those of you that were born after 1964, why did they never cover this with you in school? Those of you that were born before 1964, why did they never cover that with you in church? The Bible as history in pictures. That's the name of the book. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Look at this. 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 Somebody come look at this. Black women dancing with braids in their hair. The Bible as history in books. Hmm? During the time of ancient Egypt, Israelites in Egypt, Hebrews in Egypt, having a ceremony, dancing with big old loop earrings. I wonder who walk around with big old loop earrings to this day. Hmm. Interesting. With braids in their hair. With necklaces and beads. Interesting. Interesting. Y'all see that? They're not going to read this to you in church. They're not going to read this to you. They're not going to show you this archaeological data that is taken off the walls of Egypt in Africa, showing you the Hebrews. You see that? If anybody confused, if, as if, if they're melanated or not, look at this, look at this, look at this. If you're confused whether it's, if whether they're melanated or not, does this look like a brown person? Brother, what book is this? Thank you. For those of you joining the room, the name of the book is The Bible, The Bible, The Bible, The Bible as History, meaning archaeological data, in books, in pictures, rather. That's the name of the book. The Bible as History in Pictures. Copyright 1963. The book is out of print. Do these look like melanated people to you? Hmm. Does that look like a melanated person? Does this look like a melanated person to you? Somebody said ruddy reddish. Yeah, ruddy brown. Hold on, hold on, because somebody said ruddy reddish. Let, let's let's look up ruddy. Let's type ruddy cow. Ruddy. Because people want to play on words. People want to play on words. So I'm going to make sure that there's no doubt that these are black people. Look at this. Ruddy. Does this look like a brown cow to you? AKA black. Hmm. Ruddy cow. You see that? Ruddy cow. Red heifer, right? It's a reddish brown color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Reddish brown. You see? Ruddy. Oh, okay. They they say King David was ready, right? Oh, okay. Does this look ready right here? Does this look ready right here? Brown people. You see that? King David is described as ready. King David is an Israelite, yeah? Okay. We got to help people because people suffer from delusional out here. Okay. Somebody said type ready. Google ready. Ready earth. Okay. Let's type ready earth. Ready earth. Why is this important? We're going to remove every ounce of Eurocentric delusionalism. So that way you don't believe the lies that they tell you. Ruddy earth. You can see the just the position between the person's hand and the image of the ruddy earth. The person's hand is red, but the ruddy earth is brown. So this color is the same as this color. Meaning these are brown people, melanated people, non-Eurocentric type. This is why I call it Eurocentric delusionalism because if the Israelites look like this, if they're dark skinned like this, then what about the Catholic Church telling you that Jesus Christ is European? Okay. What about these people under the religion of Talmudism, okay, that are fighting a war over land that don't belong to them? Both the Arabs and the uh, Eastern Europeans are fighting over a land, but the Bible says the tribe of Judah is black unto the ground. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground. That's the Bible. Job 30, 30, my skin is black upon me and my bones are burned with heat. That's the Bible. Lamentation chapter four, verse eight, their visage is blacker than a coal. That's the Bible. Lamentation chapter five, verse 10, our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. We've been lied to y'all. We've been lied to. We've been deceived. This is the Bible as history in pictures, depicting the ancient Hebrews and what they look like in Africa. Okay? You see that? You see that? You see that? Caption. And when money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we be unalived in your presence? For the money fails. And Joseph said, Give your cattle, and I will give you for your cattle if the money fail. And they brought their cattle unto Joseph, and Joseph gave them bread in exchange for horses and for flocks and for cattle of herds and for the donkeys. And he fed them with bread for all the cattle for that year. So now you're reading the Bible and they're giving you hieroglyphic information so you can visualize with pictures what it's talking about. Black people, black people in Africa giving their cattle to a black man named Joseph, bowing down before him and thanking him for providing them with food during a famine. And it's in the beginning of the Bible. What was the reference? The reference was Genesis, Genesis 47. So hold on, wait a minute. If the reference is Genesis 47, and that's in the beginning of the Bible, right? Before we even get to a New Testament, how the hell now in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is a European? Hmm? The Israelites in the book of Genesis depicted as black, right? Canaanites, Egyptians depicted as black. Joseph depicted as black. But then New Testament, all of a sudden, Jesus looked like an Italian. Jesus looked like a Roman, a Greco-Roman, a European. You can't make this stuff up. Somebody been lying. This is the Bible as history in pictures. You got Joseph going to 
the Egyptians and Canaanites, they're selling their cattle over to Joseph. Here go Joseph right here. Here go Joseph right here. They're bowing down to Joseph. Okay. Thanking him. So the question for the critical thinker is this. If the caption is talking about land and the children of the Egyptians, that's in Africa, and the Canaanites, those are Hampton, Africa, selling and exchanging their horses and cattle to Joseph. And this is in Genesis 49, the beginning of the Bible. Then how the hell in the New Testament, all of a sudden, Jesus is a European. How the hell in the New Testament, when you got hieroglyphs in Egypt depicting the same thing that we're reading of in the Bible reference, black people giving their cattle in exchange for food to Joseph, who is a Hebrew and Israelite. Get a red man out of that. Get a crabby patty out of that. Get a European out of that. You can't. The Bible as history in pictures. So now, with that being said, we are being lied to, folks. The censorship is real. The censorship is real. They will censor you from learning historical information and data that will benefit you. They will censor you from hearing historical data, archaeological data that we can prove to you. How come when you went to church, they never showed you a book that gave you archaeological data proving what the ancient Israelites are? How come in 2024, we're supporting an entire conflict with presidents, prime ministers, sending money, sending pew pew to a people that are only religious converts and some of them aren't even religious and they got you so scared to speak against them that whenever you say anything about them on social media your account gets blocked your account gets banned your account gets censored they say you're spreading mis misinformation when this book that i just showed you is from 1963 so that means after world war ii i want you to really think about this if this book that I just showed you, folks, was in 1963 and 1964, that's the copyright, okay? And in 1948, a group of people went into Africa, invaded Northeast Africa, and said they were the original people of the Bible, like Benjamin Netanyahu, but out of a book written in 1963, there's depictions of Joseph, Joseph, who is a Hebrew, ruling over Africans in Egypt, and all of the depictions are melanated people, not Grecian, not Roman, not Mediterranean type, not Middle Eastern like they say, not olive like they say, not all these BS excuses that they say. The time for lies is over. The time for people lying to our faces when we're telling you that we are the ancient Hebrews of the Bible, the lost tribes of Israel, and we can prove it with archaeological data. Because guess what? I didn't dig up the tomb and say, hey, look, here it is. These books were written by German people. Germanic people had this book. And what, what is the Ola Dodge? If you want to hide something from people, put it in a book. Because certain groups of people don't like to read. That's what they do, right? That's what them folks do, right? So now we're showing you the data. And then guess what? TikTok, Facebook, the governmental structures of the world will censor it and say, no, 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 no. Because you're reading out of a book, you're spreading misinformation. Because you're reading out of a book and showing archaeological data history, they're going to say, no, 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 no. We want to learn about the Anunnaki. We want to learn about magic and zodiac signs. We want to dance on TikTok. We want to do all this. Let's have fun. 
Let's have fun. Not information, no. CNN is not going to show this to you. National Geographic. Hold on, wait a minute. You mean the History Channel been lying to us forefront? Yes. All those stories that there's a there's a movie right now on ticked on on uh Netflix called Testament, the story of Moses, and Moses is depicted as as if he's from Scandinavia. You got movies right now called The Son of God, Sons of God, uh Sons of God, right? The Gods of Egypt, Joseph, Prince in Egypt by the Disney Channel, right? Right? Y'all remember the Disney Channel movie Prince of Egypt with Joseph? And Joseph had red hair and he looked like he was he was from uh uh Scotland. Y'all remember that? How you got red hair like he from Ireland or Scotland? But we just showed you a book printed in 1963, 1964, showing Joseph during biblical times as melanated. The time for the lies are over. Break through the matrix. We all have been lied to. I don't care if you're melanated or non-melanated. We all have been lied to. Your Christian pastor is, is a deceiver. Your Islamic imam is a deceiver. Your rabbis in Talmudism and Kabbalah, they are deceivers. They are liars. Your presidents, your, your politicians, your teacher was given information to present to you in school, and it was inaccurate data. History Channel, National Geographic, talked about biblical characters but never gave you accurate descriptions. Hieroglyphic, archaeological, historic, accurate information. So we present this information in the hopes that maybe you will wake up and realize, hold up, the Bible is talking about you. Okay, correct. They blatantly are the forges of lies. How can you believe in someone that commits an act of perjury that lied to your face about the image of God, the image of Jesus, the image of the Israelites, the image of the ancient Hebrews, and then you think they're going to teach you the Bible correctly? Do you think they're going to teach you science and information correctly from a biblical-based worldview? No, not at all. Not at all. You know how they say, uh, 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 call in the kettle black, right? We're going to switch it up, y'all. We're going to say, call in, call in the teacup YT. That's what we're going to switch it up to. You know how they say, oh, you call in the kettle black? No, we're going to switch it up today. We're going to say, you're going to make the teacup YT, right? That's what they did. That's what they did. So we showed you a book that was printed in 1963. So now reason would believe that the money that's sent over to Ukraine, because those same people say they come from Ukraine, why they don't give that to the descendants of the to the, the descendants of slaves? They say, no, you you people that went into slavery and worked for free for over 400 years since the time of Christopher Columbus, well over 400 years. You people from the Caribbean islands, you African-Americans, you people that got brought to the UK as slaves. We're not going to give you nothing, nothing. Go get a job. Go work. That's what they say, right? You don't need reparations. Go work. But yet, World War II and the situation that happened in Germany during World War II had nothing to do with African Americans, nor European Americans, nor Mexican Americans in the United States. Why the hell did the United States invest money in San and Pew and money to Eastern Europeans that converted to a religion and wanted to go into Northeast Africa. And many of us did not know that their original quote unquote holy land was Uganda and not Palestine. But in order to make the lie sell, they said, no, 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 we, we can't go to Uganda. We have to go to the original place where we kicked out those people, right? We kicked out the original people, made them, them the descendants of captivity, the real Hebrews, refused to give them reparations, 
But year after year, there's a conflict in the Middle East and we need to send money to Eastern European types, quote unquote, Mediterranean type, Grecian, Macedonian, Amalekite type, Edomite type. Send it to them. Give them, give the money to the Samaritans, right? Give, give the money to those folks that are Revelation 2.9 and Revelation 3.9. And I've been going to school for years in the, in the American educational system. And they tell me that my history starts with slavery and nothing else. That's it. Just captivity in America. They never talk about the island of Haiti, how we fought and won slave, the first free black nation to win slavery and dis defeat the greatest army at that time, known as Napoleon, with the, with the, with, during the height of French imperialism and colonial, they never talk about that. No, no, don't, don't mention that. Don't mention the freedom fighters and the Maroons in Jamaica. Don't mention Nat Turner. Just give a little, maybe a little snippet, maybe two sentences about Nat Turner, maybe a paragraph about Harriet Tubman, maybe a page about MLK. But never tell me that your ancestors, Jesus, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Jeremiah, that they were all melanated people, that they were all coming from black Mesopotamia and black African folks. Don't say that. No, 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 no. Don't tell us that the Elamites and the original Persians and the Babylonians and the Sumerians were black and they were intermingled with the Hebrews. Don't tell us that the Canaanites and the Egyptians were black and they were intermingled with the Hebrews. Don't tell us that the ancient Hebrews were melanated people. No, tell us lies. Give us deception. Don't give us ar archaeological facts. That's what happened, folks. Censorship in social media is so real that we can give you a book called The Bible as History and Pictures, show you the biblical archaeology of Joseph in Egypt and show you that he's black. And people will say, no, that book don't say what it say. That ain't true. So now somebody asked me the question the other day about who are the Idumians? Does, does the book that you have depict who the Idumeans are, aka the Edomites. Guess what? It does. It does that too. Watch this. This right here is a depiction of the Edomite during the time of Christ. The Edomites were in power, aka the Romans. So now this caption is called what? In the time of Jesus and the apostles. What color was Jesus? Read Jeremiah fourteen two. Judah mourneth and the gates thereof languish. They are black, right? Jesus was from the tribe of Judah. Therefore, by default, Jesus is black. Tribe of Judah, melanated. So now, who were the Edomites? Here is the Edomite right here that was ruling over, this is like Rahm Emanuel, right? The former mayor of Chicago, Rahm Emanuel, ruling over who? Ruling over Chicago, right? Same comparison. European person, a Greco-Roman, ruling over black people. That's the same thing happened when the Greeks and Romans and the Idumeans intermingled themselves and invaded Judea and took over. The same folks that took over gave you Christianity. Watch this. Let's read the caption. It says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Meaning what? Were they a religious power that loved God and loved his people? No, they were all about the Benjamins, baby. All about the Benjamins, baby. That's how the Europeans get down. Give us our money. Give us our money. We are ruling over you now. Now you got to pay us. That's what they do, right? It says, and went and taxed everyone into his own city. That's Luke chapter 2, verse 1 and verse 3. So now, Julius Caesar, Caesar Augustus. When you read the history books, they are 
Edomites. So now, when you talk to a pastor that's of this descendant, and we say, hey, you're Esau. You were ruling over us back then. They say, no, 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 that's not true. But their own history books will tell you that is true. This is a statue, not a picture. This is a statue, not a picture. This is a picture of a statue. I mean, this ain't just something that somebody, some artist depicted. No, they engrave the image of what an Idumean Edomite looks like in stone. Because you got jokers out here saying that the, that the Edomites aren't the Europeans. Here it is right here in stone. In stone. Caesar Augustus in stone, a Edomite. Okay. So we're not making this up. They rather you to sing and dance and play and joke around. But when it comes to archaeological evidence, they don't want you to read historical books. They don't want you to prove all things like the Bible. They don't want you to do that. Okay. Caesar Augustus was an Edomite. Okay. Caesar Augustus, Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar was an Edomite. You understand? So they will prevent you from knowing this information because guess what? It'll cause you to think. It'll cause you to use your head. Watch this. Watch this. This is called BibleTruthPublishers.com The Edomite Ascendancy. The Edomite Ascendancy. Y'all see that? The Edomite Ascendancy. So now what I'm going to do is all I'm going to do is, is type, search, find in page, and let's see. Let's see. Let's type Herod, H-E-R-O-D. Oh, look at that. Herod. So King Herod is in, is mentioned in this thing under Edomite, Ascendancy, right? Okay, let's look, let's look up another word. Let's look up Caesar. Is Caesar mentioned? C. Caesar. Let's see. C A E C A R. Look at this. Oops. S A R. Look at this. You see that name right there? Caesar. Julius Caesar. Look at this. Julius Caesar. So hold on. In a book called The Edomite Ascendancy, it's mentioning Julius Caesar. It's mentioning Herod. Okay, right? Dictators and people that were citizens of Rome, right? Right? But then in the history book, it gives you a depiction of another Caesar, Augustus Caesar. These are all people that are in a, in a, in a uh, how can I say this? They were all of the same lineage. Okay? Greco Roman, Macedonian folks, people from Kittim, people from e Edom, okay, people from Syria. Right, that invaded colonizer, colonizer. Okay, so when when they tell you about their history, they say, "Oh, the Greeks and the Romans were the dawn of Western civilization. Everything right and good came from West." But when you read the Bible, First Maccabees chapter one verse eleven uh, nine says, "When the Greeks came into power, evils were multiplied in the earth. When the Greeks and the Romans came into power." Evils were multiplied in the earth. Let's read the caption. It says, it says, in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate 
being governor of Judea. Hold up, wait a minute. So the Israelites were melanated people. How the hell can an Idumean now, how the hell can a European now be a king over Judea? When we read the Bible and, and the Bible says that the tribe of Judah is black unto the ground. This is called colonization, Hellenization. New world order is the old world order. The new world order is the old world order. Allocate all resources, all wealth, all weaponry to the Greco-Roman type. That's the new world order. If you're wondering why the folks that are Eastern European in Northeast Africa are gaining money and pew pew by the United States and the European governments is because they support their own. They support their own. Will they give reparations to melanated people, Mexican people, native indigenous people? Hell nah. But they'll give it to those folks because that's their same folks. The same people that invaded and took over and call themselves now governors over Judea. That's called colonization, y'all. We got to wake up. The old world order is the new world order. So the same folks that did it back then, they're doing it right now in front of your face, bring, building their Roman architecture, their Roman designs in Africa. Okay. Idumians. We got proof on top of proof, y'all. We got proof on top of proof. All right. This book is called The Bible as History in Pictures. You know you in power when you can put your money on the face, your face on the money. So they're in Africa putting their face on the money. You see that? Watch this. It says, here's the caption. Show me the tribute money. And they bought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, this is Jesus talking to the disciples. Who is this image? and superscription. They said unto him, Caesar, Caesar, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. Meaning what? There was a separation between church and state even during the biblical times. There was a separation between church and state even during biblical times. What belongs to the, to the Edomites, pay your taxes. Go ahead, pay the taxes. Be a good citizen. But what be belongs to God is separate from that. Don't mix worship with God with worship of the white tea folks because they put themselves up as God. Don't do it. Caesar and God don't mix. Oil and water don't mix. Okay? Fire and water don't mix. Okay? Let's read the rest of the caption. It says, this was what the silver coin looked like. You see that? This is what the silver coin looked like, which was brought to Jesus and which sponsored the family's parable of the tribute money. It was a Roman. Hold on a second not a Hebrew. It was a Roman Daenerys. It was a Roman Daenerys, meaning the coin belonged to the Romans. Wait a minute. That's in Italy, y'all. So Italy, Rome, colonized Northeast Africa, colonized Egypt, colonized Algeria, colonized Libya. Because when you look up the etymology of those terms, the term Ethiopia is a Romanized term. The term Egypt is a, is a Greco-Roman term for the Hebrew word, which is Mizraim. Libya, that's a Romanized term. That's why there's a place in Africa right now called Alexandria, Egypt, because Alexander the Greek, the Greeks and the Romans invaded Africa. So hold on, they were colonizing back then and they colonizing today. Who face on the money? Whoever face on the money is the people that's in power. But God said, Christ said, render to Caesar what's to Caesar. 
So this book is called The Bible as Pictures. I'm sorry, The Bible as History in Pictures. Okay. So you saw depictions of the Israelites. You saw depictions of the Edomites. So nobody should be confused on what the Israelites look like. We showed you. If you're confused still, let me show you the picture once again of Joseph in Egypt because because somebody might have just joined in the room. Let's go back to it. Page 60, page 67, page 67 and 69 out of this book. OK, this is page 70. This is page 77. Uh, Israelites in ancient Egypt, you see the in Ancient Egypt is inscriptions. Remember, the Israelites were sheep herders and goat herders. These are melanated black and brown people, black and brown people that were sheep herders in Africa. You see that? Black and brown people that were sheep and cow herders in Egypt. Okay, does this look like a person that's Danish that converted to the religion of Judaism? No. Does this look like a Polish person? No. Does this look like a Ukrainian person? No. But these same, these same groups converted to the religion of Judaism and told you that they're the Lord's tribes of Israel. Okay? That is a lie. That is a lie. All right? Let's look at another one. Israelites in Egypt. Look at the Afros. Israelites in Egypt. Hebrews in Egypt. There's a whole entire war going on. Joseph in leadership in Egypt. If anybody's confused, Joseph, this is Joseph right here. Okay, I apologize if the image is a little blurry. This is Joseph right here. Okay. In ancient Egypt, gathering all the corn during a time of a famine. So y'all, we're not making this up. We're not making this up, okay? We're proving to you with archaeological data that the Bible is a true book, that the Bible is black history according to the Bible, that is so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, so-called Ghanaians, so-called Nigerians, so-called Afro-Palestinians, so-called Afro-Iraqi, all of these people groups that have been scattered all over the world for educational purposes only. Y'all, tap the screen and get the likes up. I can't even get the 30K. Come on, y'all. Let's tap the screen. Let's get the likes up. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. So we showed you information that they will not give you in your college campuses. The books will literally sit on the shelves and during Black History Month, they won't say a damn thing. Okay. The books will sit in the prestigious halls of Yale University, Harvard University. Okay. Oxford. They have this information but they will still support the lies and propaganda. While when we share this information with you, they'll say, no, that's misinformation. But guess what? I didn't write this book. This book was written before I was even born. I didn't, I didn't write the Bible. The Bible was written before I was born. Hieroglyphs in Egypt with the wall showing Israelites as melanated existed before any one of us, before TikTok even existed. But because we're presenting the information, they will tell you that it's misinformation. Do not fall for the lies. Thank you for listening to the Forefront Radio. I'm your host, Afia Levi Israel. If you haven't followed this account, follow it now before it gets banned, because this is my third or fourth account. If you haven't followed my backup channel, follow my backup channel. It's called the Forefront Radio 2.0. If you haven't followed us on YouTube, we're on YouTube, the Forefront Radio 1. And the Forefront Radio 2.0. If you haven't followed us on Spotify, go to Spotify and type the Forefront Radio. If you haven't followed us on iHeartRadio, go to iHeartRadio and type the Forefront Radio. If you haven't followed us on Google Podcasts or Apple Podcasts, go to Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts and type the Forefront Radio. Because guess what? Censorship is real. If you don't find us on one platform, you can go to another. John chapter 8, verse 32. You will know the truth and the truth will make you free. 
Um, we do have a cash app. Go to our profile, click on the pop a link. If you feel like donating to our platform, please do so. Support independent media. We're currently in Africa teaching that requires electricity, that requires internet signal. And it's not like how you got AT&T and you pay 50 bucks and it's unlimited. No, we get, we get a set amount of data and that's it. And you got to pay for it more and more and more over and over. It ain't like you just pay 50 bucks a month. Okay. So please support independent media. Our purpose in, in Africa is to reach all the lost tribes of Israel. I'm currently in Malawi, but Lord's willing, my mission is to travel in every country in Africa, sit down and talk to the locals, go over history, go over prophecy and teach our people and wake them up. Because the Bible says that the gospel will be preached in all nations. So what other people need good news? The descendants of slavery and colonization need someone to tell them, hey, your savior look like you. OK, so brothers and sisters, walk in unity, walk upright. If you want to contribute to our efforts here, you can do so through TikTok. Click on my profile, go to the Popple link. I have a link to both Cash App as well as a link to uh, PayPal, whichever is your preference. Feel free to uh, contribute to our efforts. So that way we could travel. We need equipment. We need cameras. We need more uh, 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 microphone setups. We need speakers. So that way, when we go out to the to the streets and preach and teach the truth, I don't got to scream at the top of my lungs. I could just use a microphone and a speaker and just get it done. OK, so if you're able to contribute to our efforts, the cash app is dollar sign A P H I E L L E V I. Somebody type it in the chat. If you want to contribute to our efforts, you can do so. Uh, let me see if I could type it here. OK, OK, there we go sticker that's what it is if you want to contribute to our efforts to teach the bible all throughout the world and spread this truth then christ is going to return through us working together to bring forth the truth to our brothers and sisters in the diaspora it doesn't matter if it's two dollars it doesn't matter if it's five dollars it doesn't matter if it's twenty dollars it doesn't matter if it's a hundred dollars whatever you can contribute to our efforts to teach this truth Here's the cash app information right here. Okay. All right. So feel free to contribute to our efforts to teach the truth out here. So if anybody's confused, say you went to the forefront radio today on TikTok and you saw a, a live presentation where we showed you archaeological data proving that Joseph out of the Israelites was melanated. And we showed you archaeological data proving that the Romans were the Idumeans, the Edomites, Caesar, King Herod. We showed you the evidence of that. And the censorship kings are going to say, misinformation, you can't read books, don't tell us to read. The greatest thing that you can have in this world is knowledge. Knowledge is power. In order to destroy a nation of people, you would have to withhold wisdom and understanding from them. You gain wisdom by reading and studying the laws of the creator. You gain wisdom and insight by studying the Bible and reading accurate history that will help you progress. How can we cure the ailments that 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 follow in the community of the diaspora. If we knew that we are the people of God, the holy people of God, maybe we would think different. Maybe we wouldn't have gang violence. Maybe we wouldn't have baby mama, baby daddy drama. Maybe we wouldn't have people fighting each other instead of knowing who your real enemy was and fighting against that. Maybe we wouldn't have propaganda from rap music promoting violence, drill music, promoting violence. Maybe if we work together, knowing that Christ is a black man, that we would love our people like we would love ourselves. Maybe if we knew that God was black, instead of Eurocentric, we would say, you know what? These, these melanated people that are on the planet, we should treat them better. Give them the reparations. Because guess what? When they were in Egypt, God jacked up Egypt for them. So hold on. If you're, if you're a Gentile, you should say to yourself, Every melanated person that I see, I'm going to be nice to him now on. If not, God is going to jack me up just like he jacked up the ancestors. 
He jacked up the Egyptians. He jacked up the Babylonians, the Persians. All their empires came to a close because they were messing with God's chosen people. What do you think is going to happen to the UK? UN, United Nations. What do you think they're going to happen to the US? Nobody gets away scot-free with God, y'all. Nobody. Treat them with care and attention. If you're a Gentile listening to this program right now, my recommendation to you is to donate to the Forefront Radio so we can get every effort to spread this truth to everyone. You need to have the faith of Rahab. When the children of Israel were going into the land of Canaan, the Canaanites were so afraid that they said the fear and the dread of God is upon us. But Rahab had enough sense to say, you know what? Um, we don't want you to unalive us. So make, we're going to make sure we uh, look out for you. So when you invade this land, it'll be, you, we will be saved. So in order for you Gentiles to be saved, you need to help Hebrew people, the real ones, and exercise the faith of Rahab. That's what Rahab did. In order to save her life and her children, he tr she treated the children of Israel fairly, the real ones, not those fake jokers over there that converted to a religion, but the melanated people that's right in your face that you call Negro, Moreno, Negro, Blacky. You're not, you're not, you're not, you're not an Israelite. You is a black. That's what y'all doing out here, man. What, what, what? Ethnic class is a color in a crayon box. Makes no sense. We still listening to the lies, comparing people to color, colors in a crayon box. We still doing that in 2024. Wake up and smell the coffee. The coffee is black, dark black. When you read the Bible, you're reading about black people. When you read the, let me say it again, because maybe some people ain't too fast. The elevator don't go to the top floor. <laughs> when you're reading the Bible, you're reading black history. You're reading about so-called Hispanics. Okay. I just showed it to you with archaeological data. Get mad. Some of y'all are going to get mad. Some, some of y'all are going to be upset. But it is what it is. It is what it is. So uh, if you haven't followed this account, Make sure you follow this account. Follow my backup channel. Thank you for listening to the Forefront Radio. Peace to the 12 tribes of Israel. My phone is on 9%, y'all, so I could really talk for another three, four hours, but I'm not. I pray that this was rewarding for you. A lot of times when we make these lives, somebody says, so the Bible is R-I-C, Rakist. Let me ask you a question. Cry out one, two, four. Was it Rakist? When they told you that Jesus Christ was European with no Bible verse, hmm? was it rockist when they told you that God was European with no Bible verse? Oh, wait a minute. So it wasn't rockist when they did that. It wasn't rockist when they were unaliving melanated people all throughout the world and colonizing the planet. And they said, for God so loved the world whoops, while they whipped you with this, while they whipped you, they said, this is the son of God. When you see me, you see God while they whipped you and burned your house down. That wasn't, that's, that wasn't rockist. Come on, man. Somebody put something in your sun kissed soda. Somebody put something in your Coca-Cola because it ain't truth. So where did they get the stories from? Send me the link, brother, uh, to do that to us. Ah, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Where was John 3, 16 when they were having plantations? And on those plantations, they would take children as young as two, three, four years old and making them work. Where was John 316 when Belgium took over the Congo region, unalive 14 million people, dismembered arms and legs and said, give us some of that chocolate, give us some of that rubber, give us some of that cocoa, gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. 
Where was John 3?